Hello, Erica Hargreaves here with story to go Welcome to our new series on inclusive design in which we're going to be featuring all sorts of ed tech tools for learning, um, content creation, and creativity. In this first episode, we'll be exploring Read and Write, which some would describe as a Swiss Army knife for literacy support tools. And it's a tool that can be used by both children and adults. Uh, to help with everyday tasks online, like reading text out loud, understanding unfamiliar words, researching assignments, and proofing written work. Uh, in this episode, we're going to go through some of the different things that you can do with Read and Write, as well as talk about some of my own experiences uh, with Read and Write. Um, this is a tool that can be used on in your as a Google Chrome extension in your browser um, but it can also be downloaded to your computer and so it's got downloads for for both Windows and Mac computers uh, it can be used on your iPad on your Android device uh, and with Microsoft Edge I'm using the uh, Chrome extension uh, in my browser for for read and write and I'm going to take you over to an article that I've been reading uh, for my master's. And so I thought I'd start here because I was first introduced to read and write um, as a student going through my master's who uh, was dealing with um, post-concussion syndrome from a long-term concussion. And with that, one of the difficulties I was having was that I was having some difficulty in reading um, online uh, without aggravating my concussion symptoms. So basically when I was reading online and especially academic literature, it was, it was aggravating my concussion symptoms. So first off, when I go into this article, what I do here when I'm using the Chrome extension is I just click on the Chrome extension in my browser there and it's that little puzzle piece with the R and W in the middle of it that's purple on my, on my, um, um, with my browser extensions. And it's supposed to, when I click my cursor beside a piece of writing, I should be able to press play for whatever reason, I'm having a glitch on my computer where that's not working. And so how I figured out to solve this is I just highlight the words where I want it to start reading. And I click Tool play. Belt theory. How will your students communicate when they leave school? How will they gather information? How will they say what they need to say? How will they make phone calls, leave messages, read books? So that's how it reads text aloud now in using this like with my concussion and in my masters this this actually wasn't effective for me with my concussion um because of the fact that um the the voice that you're getting in here is is not a particularly natural voice and i've i've fiddled around with you can you can go kind of into your settings here and you can change whatever to whatever voice you wish. I've played around with some of the different voices and uh, so far I have not found one that sounds, uh, sounds natural that I am, that is not aggravating my concussion in listening to it. Um, so so this, this was not something that was not a useful, um, way of using this for myself. However, I do know other people who have had concussions where this is useful for. And another reason why this, this actually didn't help with my concussion is the highlighting of what's being read and kind of the constant movement on the screen. For me, I found to be difficult and aggravating of my concussion symptoms, but I could see how this as a, a new reader or um, you know, kind of putting on my hat as somebody who's dyslexic. This might have helped me in the early stages of, uh, of learning to read and with my dyslexia because it'll even, like right here, it's doing the yellow highlight. Now often, and I've disabled this aspect on my computer, but it'll actually put the actual word that it's reading in blue and then, and then the, the yellow highlight all around it. 
And so you could see if you're learning how to read, whether in in your own language or in a new to you language, that, that this could be a really um, useful tool for that. Unfortunately, with my concussion again, um, not so helpful. Now, there are other things that you can do with this, which is really kind of cool. So say with my concussion, um, I'm finding that a page is too busy. And there's many pages on the internet that are, especially when you're dealing with things where there's all sorts of flashy ads and things around things. I can click on um, this button here for simplify page and it'll open up a simplified page of that article. Um, now for me right now there is way too much text too close together and it kind of does a buggy thing with my head which is not feeling so good. I can try and experiment with different color backgrounds. Um, for me uh, my head seems to be because like I actually get a sort of almost a pang in my head with all these different colors um, and so I know the, the one I get the least pang with is this white and black here uh, but I'm finding it all too close together so I'm gonna play around and put it at 1.5 apart for me this to be honest this isn't um, working for me I'm better on a page like the one on the website where things have pictures to break up the writing but um, but it's but everybody's different and this is like one of the key things to know is there's a lot of usefulness to this tool but all learners are individuals they're gonna have different preferences they're gonna have different things that work for them so even though there are many many things I would recommend read and write for and um, can see potentials in me using it long term. Um, for me, it's not going to be for the actual reading of text, um, at least not at the moment until till their voices improve. Uh, and I might use this feature here about simplify reading sometimes, but it wouldn't be for this page um, of on that Ira David so called did. Um, but again, same sort of deal I can have I can highlight something here and then it'll start to read it for me about theory how will they gather information how will they say what they need to say how will they make phone calls now, just to show you that this does look different depending on the page um, and how it's displayed uh, if I go over to this article that I've written on story to go and you can kind of scroll down and see what the article looks like now, if I go and I bring up my read and write toolbar and I click on simplify page, because I've laid the page differently out on our, on, on story to go than the way David Sokol laid his page out and I've used things like um, text headers and things like that, it actually is showing up the way I've written it out in a much more uh, accessible and friendly way for my particular brain and with my particular needs with my concussion. Now, one thing that's really cool here when you're, you, you use a simplified page layout, uh, you can also click on this discover button. And when you click on the discover button, Sometimes it'll highlight, yep, yeah, there we go. It highlights different words that people might need help in understanding. So if I click on elderly here, it um, tells me what elderly means and shows me a picture of somebody who is elderly. Um, similarly, disabilities, some pictures on, you know, that depict disabilities uh, and also you know, describes what a disability is. And so you can understand how this would be really useful to somebody who is increasing and improving their vocabulary, whether it's improving their vocabulary in a new language or whether, you know, 
they're at that age where where they're they're building building their vocabulary or or they're tackling an article that might be using language that they haven't been used to using in their past um and so and i think this is really great because it doesn't just do this with words um but word phrases that go together like the environment or pain management uh, and so that i find to be really clever also realizing that mind mapping go together so yeah um finding this to be exceedingly clever and, and quite intuitive when you think about it and I just wanted to look up um, specific words on here say I wasn't didn't know what a mammoth was I can actually click on here and I can look up what a mammoth is and it'll search it for me on the web I could also um, go to my dictionary here and click on the dictionary and it'll come up with the dictionary description for mammoth and in the different ways it's used in both as a noun and as an adjective uh, I can click on the picture and it'll give me a picture of what a mammoth is and if I were to go through and highlight certain words like say mammoth uh, another word that I might want to Say I didn't know what radically was. I'll, I'll highlight that one too. And um, curious if it'll tell me what a tech monkey is. So I'm going to highlight that one too. Um, and we'll, we'll do disability here as well. Um, now, if these are all words that I don't, um, you know, that I want to build as part of a vocabulary list, if I'm, say, studying and learning something about a different topic, like, say, it was, um, well, in this case, I'm studying tool belt theory. Mind you, not all these words go with tool belt theory. But but maybe they're just words that I want to learn more about for, for something else. I can choose which colors I want to include in my vocabulary list. So I could even do themed vocabulary lists. So maybe some are to do with tool belt theory. Maybe some are to do with, you know, just improving my vocabulary on technology. Some, some maybe are, are words or phrases that I want to want to keep and use later for myself. So I can, can totally do different um, vocab lists. But when I click on... It'll give me a few seconds while it's creating this vocabulary list. And then up comes the word, the meaning of the word, a symbol, if they've got one that goes with the word, um, and, uh, and then a space where I can put in my own notes. And you'll, you'll see that in the case of Tech Monkey, um, they couldn't actually find something. So if I wanted to put in my own definition or my own symbol, I could, but, but you know, but they, they didn't have anything in their search. So totally cool that it does that. Now I'm gonna, the, the various um, different sort of highlights right now aren't necessarily working for me for what I want to do next. So I am going to go through and I'm going to clear those. So I just click on clear highlights and I'm going to go through this article and like highlight a couple of things that maybe are useful to me for a paper I'm writing. So I'm going to go down through here and I basically want to know what is tool belt theory? So I'll scroll down and so say obviously I'm not reading through this in any depth right now but say these are all things that as I go to start writing my article on tool belt theory that I might want I can then go through and press this collect highlights 
I can once again choose if I want to have my highlights curated by clicking on or off different things. Um, so maybe I'm only including certain ones for the article that I'm writing and then I click OK. And so then it keeps all those things and it keeps them with whatever color I highlighted them in um, and a link to the article. So you could see this would become really useful if you're reading through an article and you want to have, like for me as a writer, if I want to have, um, you know, quotes that I'm going to include in my article, so I might do those quotes in a certain color if I need to know definitions or um, I might have definitions in different color. Um, if I wanted examples that I might include in my article, I might have that in a different color again. And then it gives me the source, which is fabulous for when I'm then cr creating a, um, when I need to go back later on and create, um, you know, my references to go with the, the article I've written. So this is all kinds of fabulous because I can see as a writer this being really useful and a really great way to keep all of my content in one place and create that document that makes my writing later on easier and not just a whole pile of scribbles in my notebook that I then need to go back and find where was that thing I scribbled down. So, so that's a really useful tool that I'd personally use this for both as a writer and also as an educator as I'm creating and building my different um, uh, sort of lessons within my, my online teaching. Now other things that this does, so I'm going to show you how this works. I can actually start to write text using this which is really really cool because um, you know, if you're, if you're getting arthritis in your hands later on, or for me with my concussion, if my concussion symptoms are triggered and I don't want to be spending a whole ton of time looking at a screen, this is a great way to start to write without necessarily having to look at the screen. So in one note that um, our professor in the course, course I just took, uh, Dr. Paul Hamilton had mentioned when you're using speech to to uh, text um, like software, like sort of dictaphone style style software, is it works much better when you know what it is that you wish to write in advance. Um, and so that actually works out surprisingly well for how I often think because I do like my notebooks and I like them for mind mapping and I like them for organizing my thoughts. You can see I was organizing what I wanted to share in this session today. Um, so, and if my concussion symptoms are triggered, then often writing in a notebook um, first is very useful to me. And so I might write out what I'm going to have in my article in the notebook first, and then I could read it and I don't have to look at the screen. I could just read it into my article. But to give you an example of how this works, if I click on my read and write toolbar and bring it up into this um, blog post I'm writing here, the main thing is, is I just need to have my cursor on the screen first um, and so it is right now and I haven't written out anything for this so I'm just just gonna wing this one but what I do is I click over here on talk and type hi I'm Erica exclamation mark say this isn't perfect because it didn't put a capital on the hi um, so I might have to come in and do some editing and there should be a comma there and Erica in my case is spelled with a C so I'll need to fix that but that still reduces the amount of screen time and the amount of typing I would have to do. Um, I can also put up um, predictive text here, predictions here so it, right now it's predicting how I might start my next sentence. It is a beautiful day here in Ontario, period. The sun is shining, period. The birds are chirping, period. 
As such, my cat is very happy and is sunning herself in a state of delight, period. What is it like where you are today? Question mark. And so you'll see here this, this is really great. I mean, yes, there are mistakes. Like again, it didn't put a capital on the beginning of the sentence there, but it did pick up other places where there should be a capital, like the province of Ontario being a place should have a capital. With my name, it picked up on the fact that was a name and should have a capital. Um, and you'll see that whenever I need to add punctuation, it puts it in. And it's, it's actually getting all of my words clearly written down, which is much better than a lot of um, sort of the speech to text in things like, you know, YouTube or, um, you know, in some podcasting apps. Um, so, but but as you also see, it's probably better if you do know what it is that you're going to say so that you're not saying a lot of ums or ahs or errs or hesitating and uh, and coming out with gobbledygook in, in your writing. But, but this I can see being very, very useful to me. Also, um, if you're somebody who struggles with spelling, you'll see it's spelling the words perfectly here. So... Um, so, so this also could help with somebody who has, um, has issues with spelling. Now I'm going to show you, you see how I've got prediction turned on here. If I start to write, um, this will actually come up with some different predictive things. So that, that might help me with, with what I'm writing about. So yeah, so you could see how this really would help with with your writing. Yeah, if we go uh, over here and we click on practice read aloud, this is bringing up the text I just wrote, and I can actually then if I'm if I'm learning how to, you know, read and speak, say in a different language or. I'm I'm practicing my reading, you know, if I'm a, if I'm, you know, a younger kid or um I can then go through and I can start to practice a recording of this. So learning and creating with read and write gold. Hi, I'm Erica. It's a beautiful day here in Ontario. The sun is shining, the birds are chirping. As such, my cat is very happy and is setting herself in a state of delight. So obviously there was a, um, you know, a prediction error right there in setting, because I think I said um, something else like lying in a state of delight. But now I can actually play back what I just read. Learning and creating with read and write gold. Hi, I'm Erica. It's a beautiful day here in Ontario. The sun is shining, the birds are chirping. As such, my cat is very happy and is setting herself in a state of delight. I just realized what that was supposed to say. That was supposed to say sunning herself in a state of delight. So I'll just fix that. I, I want to actually experiment with this in um, practicing maybe my French. Um, and my my French uh, writing skills, because because I could see going through and 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 learning how to write better in French and also speak better in French with something like with a tool like this. And on that note, say I'm doing some reading and I'm doing my reading in French, so um, I could go through this and anytime there's a word that I don't understand. Um, as I'm reading through something in French, I can click on the translate button here and it'll translate it into whatever language I've got marked in here. And so in this case, it is in French and I can actually play it in French. Table. Encablure. And there's. Cable. Or say I want to do this in a different language instead. So I've spent some time 
uh, traveling in Egypt. And so maybe I want to know the Egyptian words for some of these things. And so maybe it's English and I'm wanting to learn the Egyptian word for it. Or maybe it is me reading, you know, in a different line or, you know, me on a site where I'm, where I am reading in a different language and I want to learn the, um, I want to, I want to learn, I don't understand what it is in that language. So I, I need to learn it and, you know, know what it is in English and I can just switch what the translation tool is here. So now I'm going to be doing this in Arabic. Um, now I've noticed that sometimes I need to refresh the page when I change the language. So I've refreshed the page and uh, let's try invent in Arabic. So. So that's a great way to kind of, you know, increase your vocabulary in some different languages too, as well as if you're reading in another language um, um, and you're not sure what something is, learning what the English translation is. So yeah, um, this is what I've been kind of experimenting with this. There's also other different things like, so say, I don't know about you, but sometimes I get overwhelmed by all the text on a page or I need to focus on a paragraph if I'm really tired. Um, and this will allow me to do that too because if I do screen masking, it just shows me what is, you know, lit up in my screen masking at a time. So I can focus on one section and ignore everything else. Um, And then there's another tool here. So this one is, if I highlighted this text, this is actually a really cool one. If I any if I say I want to like have this read to me why I am driving to work or to school or on a road trip. Um, and I don't want to, like, I don't know if I'm going to have the internet, plus I don't want to be fiddling around on my computer while I, obviously you don't want to be fiddling, fiddling around on your computer while you're driving. I can click Audio Maker. It's creating an audio file of this. And now I've got these two audio files that, as I am driving, um, I could then easily listen to in the car. How will your students communicate when they leave school? Okay, there are definitely things in here. While I might not find all the tools to be useful to my own personal needs, there are definitely tools in here um, that I would use um, to, to help me with my, with my writing. Um, and so what I would love if, if you see tools in there, that would be ways that you'd use something like read and write, let me know about it in the comments. If you find, you know, different hacks for yourself in, in using it that, uh, that you think others could benefit from, please share that with us in the comments. At the time of sharing this video, um, they have a 30 day free trial. So you can go over and you can experiment with it till your heart's delight for 30 days. If you are a part of any education system, um, many, many education systems have a subscription to read and write so you can ask your school board or research with your school board or your school um, how to access read and write uh, for them. I know with the school I teach at BCIT it is accessible to all students. They don't have to be a member of the Accessibility Center to access it. It is also accessible to all staff and uh, you just in my case, type in BCIT, 
read and write and a page pops up and it tells you as a student or a staff member how to go and uh, download your your free access to to read and write um, also if you're a teacher it is free all the time and so the Chrome extension I'm using here is actually one that was set up through Ahimsa Kids, which is our set teaching arm. And so even though we're not part of a school board, we do teach K to 12 kids. So I decided to try signing up through Ahimsa Kids. And it took me a matter of a couple of seconds. And even though we weren't like an official school or school board, it um, it allowed me to access it, which is really great to know because it says it's only for K to 12 teachers. Um, but based on what just happened, what happened when we signed up with the Himsa Kids, I'm guessing that um, as a post secondary teacher, you could probably just put in your school name and you would not have in your school email and you wouldn't have a problem signing up for it. There you have it. Read and write love to hear about your experiences um, whether good or bad um, so please please share about them in the in the comments and if you have a particular piece of ed tech that you would love to see us cover on another episode please also share it in the comments and on that note i bid you adieu and look forward to seeing you next time bye for now